Greetings friends, welcome. Today we're looking at using multiple GitHub accounts on a single machine uh, and how to manage the usernames and passwords so well, so you don't have to enter them every time you try and do a push. Um, you can, you know, we can get the username and password stored for a single account fairly easily. And uh, there's a little trick to try and get um, two, two or more accounts being stored. So let's jump in and have a look. So I've got two, um, two repos here. I've got a, a shot of code on the left here. And I've got Mark James Howard on the right here. So I'm gonna, we're going to pull, I've, I've cloned both of these down and they've just got a single file in and everything else is pretty much clean. So it's going to ask us for our passwords and stuff to start with, which is fair. Um, so let's do that. Let's, if we look here, we've got the, the two repos. So I'm going to go into the shot of code and I'm just going to edit the test.txt that we've got in there. And we'll just add some a change in there. And then if we look at that, so we've got a modified file. We want to push that up. Okay, that's fine. Let's do a commit. Right, so because this is nice and clean, um, we haven't even got the uh, the user details and name and the email specified. I wanted to come come from the base here. So we need to add those. There's two places you can add them. You can add them to the local config for Git or into the global. Uh, so we're going to put them in the global because then it will affect all of the projects. So we want to do a, well, let's, let's clear this down so we can see it. We want to do a git um, config and set the global user name. And this is a shot of code. So let's set it to a shot of code. And then also we want to do the same uh, for the user dot email, and we'll just say shot of code at MJ Howard, like so. And yes, I did mean two dashes. That's pretty good of it, isn't it? All right, and now we can just check that that's in there. So we can look at this global config. Uh, we we'll git config dash dash global. And we need to specify uh, the editor to use, minus E. Right, so it stored off that user information in there. Now this is the this is the file that Git is going to be referring to when we do a push, and we're going to add a navr entry in, in here in a minute to set uh, the credential storage. Right. We can we can do our commit now. Now that we've got the user set up. So that's good. And then we're going to try and do a push, which should ask us for our credentials. Okay, so there's a dialog. We're going to grab those for a shot of code. Um, so let's grab the username. And also a password. And we enter that, and that should then get the push working. Now, so this is with pretty much the default setup. Now, what has it done there? Has it stored that? Um, and where has it stored those credentials? Well, if we look up the credential manager in Windows, we'll see if we've got anything added here. And it has, by default, it has added in uh, git https github.com and it's stored those details in there. So I can do a Nava push now. So say I do notepad uh, test again and we make another change, save that off, and commit, and then give that a push. So this time, it's not gonna ask us for the credentials, it's pulling out of that credentials manager for us. That's fine for one account. Uh, the problem now is, it's just using that, um, it's not using the repo name, it's just using GitHub. So any other repos we try and push, we'll try and use just this. Um, well, it would either overwrite this or use this one, and either way, we're going to be in trouble. So let me let me show you the issue there. So we come out of this repo, and if we go into the other one, Mark James Howard, and again, we just got a file in here that we can we contain. So we got test the text, and we just add something in there. Um, and close that one off, like 
so. And let's commit that. And now try and push this. Now, we're really expecting either it to ask for the credentials um, or to fail. And it's failed because it's using this value, this one here, is what it's using because we because it, we're going to github.com and not the specific repo it says fine we'll just use these credentials and when it gets there we are getting permission denied because it's trying to um uh, yeah it's trying to use the a shot of code credentials which obviously aren't going to work so what we can do is tell git to um, save these on a, a more uh, defined url and we do that by adding in to our config and it's the global one we want to do and we want to say credential and we want to say use HTTP path and we want to set that to true and we can look at this now in there so let's do a git config uh, global and minus E to open it up and so this is the line that we've added into our global configuration for Git. And when I push now, we will see a difference in um, in what we store rather than this string. It will have a much more complete string. So let's close that off, and let's uh, let's try and do a Git push straight here and see what it does this time. Right. So it's realised that. Um, the account we're pushing with isn't uh, available in the credential manager so this time it's popping up um, the dialogue to ask us so we can add in uh, details so let me grab the password for this one like so and then so that that push has now worked because I've given it those uh, credentials and if we come back in the credential manager and I refresh it again here. You can see we've got another new entry now, and it's not just github.com, but it's got the actual repo name in. So it's storing it on that basis. So, so now when I go back to a shot of code, so let's go, let's go back into a shot of code repo, and we'll update the file in here again, like so, and add that change and now when I give this a push it's gonna um, it's gonna ask me again because this this um, this first one now is just completely invalid it's because it's well it's not valid but it's not being used when we do this push it's checking in here for one that's gonna have github.com forward slash a shot of code and it's not there so we get the dialogue again so I think I can put the details in so I grab those again. So grab the username and the password. And with that in place, our push succeeds. And we come back into the credentials manager and we've got another one. So we can have as many accounts as we want and it will store the credentials for each one. Um, and the way that we do that, and I'll, I'll put this in the description and also some of the blog posts that um, I uh, used to, to, to get this information. Um, but it was, we wanted to go into uh, the config and, it's, and we want it to be the global one. You can do it locally, but easier to do it global. Um, and we need to set credential.use HTTP path. And we need to set it to true okay and that gives us that ability um, one other thing as well is we also might want to be able to specify which user is making those changes if we look at um, let's look at the history for the shot of code repo here and look at the commits so this last one was done by a shot of code but if we wanted to um, manage which user we're pushing as you can actually specify that in the file I mean we have and we, we specified it in the global file if I if I come into 
uh, global and uh, do minus E to open it up again. Then this is the user we're going to be using for all pushes, a shot of code, which is what we're seeing here. But if we want to change that, we can either change it here, uh, but then we're going to have to keep on changing it each time. But say we wanted to always push as a particular user that matched, then we can change it in the local config. So we do git config, no global, um, and we can then set user.name. And let's say we, we're going to do Mark James Howard here. And we can do git config user.email. And we'll say Mark James Howard at Hotmail. Now, so let's let's make an edit to the file again. Like so. And then commit that. So when I push this now, if we look in the repo at the moment, it was a shot of code who, who was pushing it in. I'm gonna push this one. It's gonna use my stored credentials because it knows it on a per repo basis. And it should use this user as well. So let's have a look at uh, the commits and we can see, right, we've now got that user. So not only can we store the credentials that, um, for the authentication, but we can specify which user is going to be visible as whoever made that push. Um, now, one thing to note here, when I'm, let me bring this, let me just clear this up again. Let's look at our global. When I'm pushing that on this PC, I'm only specifying credential. Um, you can actually, on, on some, make it even more specific. So you could have like github.com in there and you would type that um, like this. So you would do git config global and then uh, credential.github.com and then .use HTTP path. Um, but for some reason that was not working on this PC. It was on my phone, but not this one. But it's, so, you know, there, there's bound to be little problems between computers. Um, but in, in general, this is the path you want to be going down using this credential manager. Uh, and that also as well, if you find that it's not storing anything in the credential manager, you might need to uh, explicitly say that as well. So you can add another one and say credential.helper is manager. Um, and if we look in, if we look in our config for that now, let me close that off. And get back into global and minus E we would see we've got, I didn't add that in. Let me try that again. Global credential.helper manager. And then let's open it up. Maybe because it's not saved, oh yeah. Okay, so let me just override that one. Dunk. Run it again there. Open it up. Okay, and it's added it in down the bottom here now. So if you're finding nothing's getting added to the Windows Potential Manager, you might need to add this line in as well. Okay, so there you go. Uh, I hope that was helpful. It's uh, certainly, you know, if you have got that case with two, it's uh, a lot easier than typing in those commands all the time. This is using uh, HTTPS. We can also do this with SSH, but that's another video. Uh, so maybe next time. Anyway, thanks for watching. Catch you later. Bye.